Hello, this is David Schnorr recording for the Thermodynamics Semester Project. I decided to build a steam engine from scratch using a soda can. So a little quick process of how I did that. I got the Eupenia soda can because I figured the higher sugar content, the more potential it has to be an excellent engine. I poked two holes in it on opposite sides. So this one's a little faded to represent that it was on the opposite side of the can. So after doing that and ejecting all the delicious uh, beverage into the sink, I, or actually I put it into a cup so I could have it later. But uh, the second step was to um, add some water to the can. I didn't want so much that it would be like overflowing or touching the holes. I wanted there to be a little bit just so that there would be something, enough steam to be created. After that, step three was to suspend the can from a swivel. Uh, this is a fishing swivel. It ended up being a lot better than the lanyard swivel that I had initially. Uh, there was a lot less friction in this, uh, and that saved us a lot of trouble uh, moving forward. And then you loop the uh, any type of string. I used some rubber fush, uh, fishing line, which wasn't the best, uh, but loop it under the cap towards the center of it, and then put it over a flame. I ended up using a uh, camping stove. Initially, we were I was using three lighters. I had my brother helping me. We were using three lighters to try to uh, heat up the water, and it worked a little bit, but not to the level where steam was rapidly coming out of the sides. It was more like a puff puff, and then it would stop. And before using that lanyard swivel, there was too much friction, so it wasn't even able to get a full rotation, which was very disappointing, but we eventually got it. The next step uh, was to observe the steam coming out. So as I mentioned, there were puffs coming out, but after we put it on the camping stove and there was enough heat rapidly being ejected into it, the puffs of air were constant and it was enough to rotate, which was step five, the, the can around. So because these are in opposite directions, this is a coupled moment. So as the steam is pushing out this way, the can will move that way, counterclockwise. So, um, and then this on the opposite side has the same exact effect. So it gets a nice steady rotation. And after it's rotating, uh, if you keep keep it rotating, it'll just keep on going. And I actually included a little bit of that in the video as well. So I'll uh, further describe the future parts of this video as they come along. Uh, but for now, please enjoy our first attempt. Come on. Yes! Oh. Make a full rotation. <laughs> <gasps> so close. Swing! It's building up. Oh, right. It's gonna burst and. That's how it works. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. The, um, I had to tie it to a, uh, to the lanyard, and then now it's a, a whole mess also a problem. As I mentioned before, the rubber fishing line was a problem, and in that video clip, it was about to become undone, so we were going to try to catch it, but it was just on three flames, and it was very hot, so we were all kind of nervous too, but we caught it on the lighters and kind of lowered it to the ground and let it cool off for a bit. In the next segment, we weren't as lucky finishing, but we had figured out to alter one thing and it made a slight improvement. Are you kidding me? Sorry. In that attempt, I switched out the lanyard swivel for a fishing swivel, which had a lot less friction, and it was definitely more plausible for there to be a full rotation. That was what I hoped. The fact that we held it under the lighters for so long meant that the fishing wire at the top was getting more and more heated and expanding and then slowly falling apart. We weren't as lucky in that one, uh, but the fishing swivel was a good improvement. 
I then figured out that it must have been the heat source that was too low for there to be a proper um, input of energy. So our final design looked something more like this. Well, not more like this, it was this. So I had a uh, proper string attached this time so there wouldn't be any falling apart. Uh, the fishing swivel is now here and because the rubber fishing wire was already under there, uh, I figured it'd probably be easier to just leave it on, but because we would have a proper burner this time, it'd be less likely for any accidents. We have the can, which at this point had several battle scars, and a very proper heat source from the camping stove and the propane. Oh, steam's coming. Hey. <laughs> That's perfect. Oh my gosh. After finding out that it worked, my brother and I wanted to see what the maximum power that this steam engine could hold was. So we turned the throttle all the way and the ending was a little dangerous, but no one was harmed in the process. It was a very fun end. Full full? All right. You're getting it, it explodes. <laughs> it is full. <laughs> Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I figured that the steam engine components would be easy to find, it would be cost effective to do so, and it would also be easy to create in a timely manner, as opposed to a different type of steam engine. I was surprised by the durability of the can, considering how cheaply they're made, that thing held up until the very end, as you saw in that previous clip. But it was enjoyable to create nonetheless, and very rewarding to find that it actually did work after we applied the camping stove heat, which was large enough to maintain uh, proper intake of heat to the uh, soda can. It was an exciting project to build, and I'm very thankful that it did end up the way it did. Thank you.